Listen, some people believe this is where we're headed. Like, not the country, but the, the world. Everybody in total. Like, this is where we're headed. Some people really believe that. So I want to get a feel for it. I want to I wanna see what it's like or see what they're saying it could potentially turn out to be. This is 20 of the most populated places on earth. As our world's population continues to grow, some cities have become incredibly crowded with millions of people living in cramped conditions. In this video, we'll take you on a tour of some spots that are not recommended for the claustrophobic. From the towering skyscrapers of Hong Kong to the chintz's growth city of the future, here are the 20 most populated places on Earth. Number 20. Hong Kong, vertical living in a bustling hub. Living in Hong Kong is hard work. The place is one of the most densely packed places in the whole world. It's long been associated with tightly squeezed communities and busy streets, but despite the fact that the birth rate here is only 0.774 per woman, the population is still growing. Although Hong Kong itself covers 1,068 square kilometers, only about 25% of that is actually built up areas. There are more than 7 million people crowded into those urban spaces, and most of them live in high-rise buildings. The city is actually home to the largest number of skyscrapers in any city on the planet. Despite the number of people, these residents actually have amongst the highest life expectancy in the world. There's an excellent public transportation system, and Hong Kong is a thriving financial center, as well as a bustling cultural hub. The city is hugely important in the history of filmmaking as well. So there are drawbacks to living in a densely populated place, but Hong Kong also has some of its benefits. The city has excellent infrastructure and urban planning, and it's apparently a place that people enjoy living and working in, and it continues to thrive. Hong Kong's ability to adapt and innovate in response to its population challenges is a testament to its resilience and forward-thinking approach to urban living. The blend of cultural richness, economic opportunities, and quality of life make it a unique and enduring city on the global stage. Number 19. Guangzhou, a city of growth and potential. And now we have a slightly unexpected offering. Guangzhou does not have an especially high population density compared to some other places, but it has the potential to become a super densely populated city in the future. Currently, there are about 2,000 people per square kilometer in Guangzhou. The city at present has a total surface area of 7,434.4 square kilometers, so there is room for the population to keep expanding and pack people in like we've seen elsewhere if it becomes necessary. Located about 120 kilometers to the north of Hong Kong, it's a place with a long and interesting history. It was a significant stop on the Silk Road and has long served as a major port and hub for transportation. It is known for many significant sites, which include several important temples and buildings, and is also a huge educational center, housing many of the most important and prestigious universities of China. With its strategic location, historical significance, and ongoing development, Guangzhou is poised to continue its growth and play an even more significant role on the global stage. The city's blend of ancient culture and modern innovation makes it a fascinating place with tremendous potential for the future. Look at that traffic, bro. That's the, that's the one thing, fam. Listen, fam, I live in Atlanta. So the traffic, I, I couldn't do it nowhere. I can't do it nowhere else, man. I hate doing it here. You talking about moving somewhere else and dealing with that type of track? Look at this again, look at this again. Innovation makes it a fascinating place with tremendous potential for the future. It was all the way back. Did you see how far it stretched? No, no, and that's, I feel like that's light traffic. Atlanta has like seven lane highways on each side. Still be backed up. No, no, I can't, no, no more traffic. Number 18. Kathmandu, the historical heart of Nepal. Kathmandu is the capital city of Nepal. 
located in South Asia. It is the most populous city in the country, nestled in the Kathmandu Valley, which sits at about 4,600 feet above sea level. Interestingly, Kathmandu is one of the oldest continuously inhabited places on Earth. Founded in the 2nd century AD, it has served as the home of Nepal's royal family over the centuries. Numerous palaces and mansions reflect its rich history, and the city remains the cultural and economic hub of Nepal. It is also the largest metropolitan area in the Himalayan mountain range. Kathmandu's historical significance is highlighted by its many UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The Kathmandu Valley itself houses seven such sites, including the famous Swayambhunath Stupa, also known as the Monkey Temple, and the ancient Durbar Squares in Kathmandu, Patan, and Paktapur. These sites attract tourists from all over the world, significantly boosting the local economy. The city's blend of ancient traditions and modern developments creates a unique atmosphere that draws visitors and new residents alike. The preservation of these cultural landmarks amidst rapid urbanization is a testament to Kathmandu's commitment to maintaining its heritage. Number 17. Kaibera, Nairobi's struggle with slum conditions. Kaibera is a neighborhood in Nairobi, Kenya. It is not just a slum district, but is considered the largest slum in Africa and one of the largest in the world. Home to about 250,000 people, Kaibera represents the harsh reality for many of Nairobi's residents. Despite only covering 6% of Nairobi's land area, the slums house over 2.5 million people. The overcrowded conditions in Kaibera are dire, with shacks measuring around 12 feet by 12 feet, often accommodating up to eight people. Many of these residents sleep on the floor due to the lack of space. Only about 20% of Kaibera's population has electricity, and access to clean water has been a recent improvement. Previously, residents relied on water from Nairobi Dam, which was contaminated with typhoid and cholera. Now, two new water mains provide a much-needed basic service. Sanitation remains a major issue, with one toilet, essentially a hole in the ground, serving around 50 shacks. Living in Kaibra is a daily struggle for survival, highlighting the urgent need for comprehensive development and support to improve the lives of its residents. Number 16. Vijayawada, a dynamic city in Andhra Pradesh. We are now exploring Vijayawada, a bustling city in the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh. Known for its vibrant culture and significant educational institutions, Vijayawada is a metropolis teeming with activity. The city's density is quite high, with approximately 31 200 people per square kilometer. Despite this crowded environment, Vijayawada manages to thrive, drawing tourists and new residents alike. The city's popularity can be attributed to its cultural richness and strategic economic importance. Vijayawada is recognized as a global city of the future and plays a crucial role in the financial growth of the area and the nation. Tourists flock to the city to visit its famous temples and participate in the Indian festival of Pushkaram, a river-worshipping ritual. This cultural significance, combined with its economic potential, makes Vijayawada a dynamic and attractive place to live and visit. The city's ongoing development and strategic initiatives continue to enhance its status as a key player in India's growth. Number 15. Damascus, an ancient city amidst modern turmoil. The city of Damascus in Syria is one of the world's most ancient and important places. It has, however, in recent years, been at the center of the Syrian civil war and has changed to become almost unrecognizable from its former self. The city of Damascus is the seat of the Syrian government and is the oldest capital city in the world, also being named as the oldest continuously inhabited city. In 2022, the population of Damascus was more than 2.5 million people. In 2004, it had been 2.7 million. In 2019, the city was named as the least livable city out of 140 worldwide. Despite the ongoing conflict, Damascus retains a rich cultural heritage that dates back thousands of years. The city is home to numerous historical sites, including the Umayyad Mosque, one of the largest and oldest mosques in the world, and the ancient Souk al-Hamidiyah, 
a bustling market that has survived centuries of change. These landmarks remind us of Damascus's storied past and its importance as a cultural and religious center. Efforts to preserve these sites continue, even amidst the destruction caused by the war, highlighting the resilience of its people and their dedication to maintaining their heritage. Number 14. Laval Loire Pere, Europe's most densely packed city. The really rather tiny city of Laval Loire Pere is actually only four miles from Paris. So, really, in many respects, it's basically still a part of the expansive and sprawling mile of area. And yet, within that space, there are about a bazillion people. Well, actually, there are 68 to 458 per square mile. It's believed to be the most densely populated place in the whole of Europe. As well as squashing lots and lots of people into a teeny-weeny area, this city is famously where the taxis from Paris are held when they're not within the city limits. This look normal though. This don't look like a heavily populated city. It don't even look small. It don't look not like the previous ones we've seen so far. So this one looks rather normal. It's also apparently known for being a hub of the perfume industry and for its beekeeping tradition. The city has a bee as its modern emblem, although where the heck they keep bees and have space to park loads of taxis or indeed make perfume with all those people? Who could possibly say? La Valois Perret's history is deeply intertwined with the industrial and economic development of the Paris metropolitan area. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the city experienced rapid growth due to its proximity to Paris and its strategic location along major transportation routes. This growth was fueled by the establishment of various industries, including textiles, manufacturing, and later, the perfume industry, which remains a significant economic activity in the city. The beekeeping tradition also has historical roots, with urban beekeeping becoming increasingly popular as a means of promoting sustainability and biodiversity in densely populated areas. Number 13. Karachi, Pakistan's City of Lights. As the biggest and most populated city in Pakistan, Karachi is a significant place, and lots of people live and work within its bounds. Approximately 16.8 million of them, actually. This population has grown rapidly in recent decades, and with that rapid growth, there tends to be an expansion of poor quality housing to accommodate the bulge in people. And in Karachi, this means that about 50% of the city's population live in slums. Not ideal. There's currently a population density of about 24,000 people per square kilometer, or 63,000 people for each square mile. Karachi is the largest city in Pakistan, although it is not the capital. That honor belongs to Islamabad. Karachi's historical significance extends beyond its role as a major urban center. The city has been a pivotal hub for trade and commerce since ancient times, serving as a key port on the Arabian Sea. Its strategic location has made it a melting pot of cultures, with influences from various regions blending to create a unique and diverse cultural landscape. Karachi's vibrant markets, such as the famous Empress Market, and its rich culinary traditions, reflect this cultural amalgamation, offering a glimpse into the city's dynamic heritage. Number 12. Kolkata, a city of contrasts. Kolkata, which was formerly known as Calcutta in English, is a big city in West Bengal in India. The city itself has a population of an estimated 4.6 million, but if you expand to include the suburbs, the population increases to more than 14.3 million, which makes it the third most populous metropolitan area in India. After it was relinquished by the British Empire and returned to India, Kolkata went through a period of economic difficulty and political violence before settling and regaining its significance. There's a I can imagine. Think about it, man. All of those people there, right? So that makes the the jobs like super scarce and you're competing for a job with all these other people bro it's probably the most competitive you know what i mean like I, I, how can you get a job in, in a in a city like that that's that crowded what are you gonna do that's how you end up in these like slum villages that they've been showing and different things like that and people's health and like, this is a problem, bro. And you don't see no candidates in no countries and no other places, even in our own, talking about 
this potentially happening here, what's going on over there, what we can do to stop it, what we can do to try to prevent it, creating new jobs, doing different things to do that and address it and try to get in front of it and, and, and at least try to slow it down. But you hear in certain other countries, they've given incentives for you to have kids. They want you to have more kids. But they don't say stuff like this could happen or the jobs will be scarce pretty soon. So think about that, man. There's a bunch of interesting things about it. It's home to the Eastern Indian film industry and a bunch of different culturally important places from the National Library of India to the Academy of Fine Arts. There are also many scientific institutions that are based within the city. Kolkata is renowned for its rich literary and intellectual heritage. The city has produced numerous celebrated writers, poets, and philosophers, contributing significantly to Indian and global literature and thought. The annual Kolkata Book Fair, one of the largest in the world, attracts millions of visitors and showcases the city's deep-rooted passion for books and learning. Additionally, Kolkata is known for its vibrant festivals, including Durga Puja, which transforms the city into a lively and colorful celebration, drawing tourists and locals alike to its artistic displays and cultural performances. Number 11. Gutenberg, New Jersey the most crowded town in America. Whereas Washington, D.C. may be densely populated in some respects, it is the small town of Gutenberg in New Jersey that wins the award for being the most crowded place in the United States of America. The municipality of Gutenberg is only a tiny rectangle of land in Hudson County, New Jersey, but about 11,700 people are squashed into... That, that makes me nervous. Seeing that right there, I'm I'm a type of person I'm walking around with my hands in my pocket because I'm 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 paranoid about somebody trying to pickpocket me or something like that or and, and, and no no you would have think I've been in the service or the military and something like that and just came home and can't be in big crowds or something like that and I've never been in the military but I just this right here yeah anxiety level through the roof to a space that only amounts to about two-tenths of a square mile. This staggering density raises the question, why is this small town so tightly packed? Gutenberg's population density can be attributed to its unique housing and geographic factors. A significant portion of its population resides in a few large apartment complexes, which allows more people to live in a smaller area. Additionally, Gutenberg's proximity to New York City makes it an attractive location for commuters who work in the city, but prefer the slightly quieter suburban lifestyle. The availability of affordable housing compared to New York City also contributes to its high population density. Time for the fancy topic. Cityscape, a hidden gem that not many have heard of, holds the title of the most densely populated place on Earth. Nestled in a remote valley, this city is a labyrinth of towering apartment buildings packed closely together. The sheer number of people living here is astonishing, with every square inch utilized to accommodate the masses. From above, it appears as an endless sea of balconies, laundry lines, and narrow alleyways. I wonder how the health is for that area. Because I'm thinking back, back to the, like, the pandemic. When you're that close to each other like that, highly populated, like you can't escape all those sicknesses and different things like that because you're constantly around people. You probably walk around sick all the time because a person's right here and they can be sick and you're always shoulder to shoulder with people. Despite its crowded nature, Cityscape is a vibrant and bustling community. Residents have adapted to the tight living conditions, creating a unique culture of cooperation and shared spaces. Markets spill out into the streets, and every available rooftop is turned into a garden or recreational area. The city's infrastructure struggles to keep up with the population, leading to innovative solutions like vertical farms and shared utilities. Interestingly, Cityscape is known for its efficient public transportation system. Trains and buses run continuously, ferrying people to and from work, school, and other activities. Despite the overcrowding, the sense of community is strong, with neighbors often helping each other out in times of need. Would you be able to live in such a densely populated place? What do you think could be done to improve living conditions in Cityscape? 
let us know in the comments with the hashtag fancy topic. Number 10. Hudson River, New Jersey, a sky-high population. It seems that a fifth of the town's population all live in one large apartment complex that's located in three skyscrapers called the Galaxy Towers that overlook the Hudson River. This place accounts for the large increase in population numbers since the towers were constructed. In fact, the amount of space that would be allocated per person if they each had an equal piece of square mile stuff would amount to the equivalent area of one small studio flat per inhabitant in the whole municipality. The construction of the Galaxy Towers in the 1970s was part of an urban development initiative aimed at providing modern, high-density housing solutions for the growing population. These towers not only offer stunning views of the Hudson River and Manhattan skyline, but also include numerous amenities such as swimming pools, fitness centers, and retail shops. This makes the towers highly attractive to residents, contributing to their high occupancy rates. Number 9. Dhaka, Bangladesh, a crowded economic hub. Up next, we have yet another contender for the most full-up place in our world. This time we're in Bangladesh, in the center of Dhaka, the hub for the nation's economy and home to about a bazillion people. The sums have been done, and apparently there are somewhere in the region of 47,000 people per square kilometer in Dhaka. It sounds pretty cozy. This massive city is hugely important to the country as a whole, and it actually accounts for more than a fifth of Bangladesh's gross domestic product. It's where you'll find almost half of all the jobs in the country. But despite the obvious necessity for many people to live in this place just to make a living, it's still considered to be in the top five least livable cities in the world, which is hardly a ringing endorsement. The trouble is that where there's enormous overcrowding, there's also a massive strain on the infrastructure of a place, as well as all that extra junk that comes along when you stuff a whole lot of people into a small area. There's loads of gross pollution. There's an insane level of noise, ridiculously insufferable traffic. I'm not doing that. Mm -mm. Uh, people already drive crazy and I hear about them in other places when it's crowded like that. How crazy people drive and they've gotten used to driving that. No, nah, I'm not doing that right there, fam. No, <laughs> no, no, no. My anger, bro. Oof. Whew. The road rage in me. That's that's a constant battle for me to keep that suppressed, bro. Because of how people are on the road and how quickly these things can escalate. So that, that's a trigger. That's a trigger for me. And lots of unplanned housing just popping up out of sheer necessity. People do need shelter, but this haphazard urbanization can be dangerous. Where there's a lack of safe housing and poor infrastructure, there's also an increase in problems. And with the average driving speed being seven kilometers per hour, nobody is getting anywhere fast. DACA's challenges underscore the need for comprehensive urban planning and sustainable development to improve the quality of life for its residents. Number eight, Saint-Jostin-Node, Belgium's crowded municipality. Belgium is not the biggest country, nor the most populated on planet Earth, but it does have a place which has rather a lot of people squashed in together into an unfeasibly small area. This is saint josé tain a municipality in the Brussels capital region of Belgium. Its proximity to Brussels, the capital of Belgium, makes this a very populous place indeed. Even though the average population density in Belgium is 377 inhabitants for every square kilometer, this place surpasses that by an absolutely bananas amount. The population density of this municipality is 23,234 inhabitants for every square kilometer. Many of the people who live in the place are those who have emigrated to Belgium to work in the capital. Thrilling stuff, I'm sure, but this is Belgium after all, and you know how it can be. saint jos tain nudes high population density is driven by its location within the Brussels metropolitan area, which is an important center for European politics, business, and culture. The municipality attracts a diverse population, including expatriates, international workers, and students, all of whom contribute to its vibrant multicultural atmosphere. The availability of public transportation, educational institutions, and employment opportunities make it a desirable place to live despite its crowded conditions. 
Number 7. Malabon overflowing with life and challenges. Here we are again in the Philippines, actually not far at all from where we were just a matter of moments ago. This is Malabon, a distinctly urbanized city located just to the north of the city of Manila. You know where we saw a really dense population of people packed in like sardines? Anyways, this place seems to be a kind of overflow car park for the excess population that is leaking out of the capital. It's a mostly residential and industrial place and is massively all of low of people. The total land area is 15.96 square kilometers, and the population, according to their 2020 census, is 380,522. Malabon's history and culture add another layer of complexity to its crowded conditions. Known for its rich heritage, Malabon is home to several historical landmarks, traditional festivals, and unique culinary specialties. The city's residents take pride in their local customs and community spirit, which helps to foster a sense of unity, despite the challenges of overcrowding. Malabon's strategic location along the river and its proximity to major commercial areas make it a crucial hub for trade and industry in the region. That means that these people are all squished together at the rate of 23,842 people per square kilometer, which is rather an intimate and distinctly snug situation, to be honest. Number 6. Mong Kok, Hong Kong's Crowded Corner Here we are in Hong Kong, this time in an area known as Mong Kok. Stop it! Get your minds out of the gutter. Mong Kok is the Cantonese word for busy corner, and that may actually be ever so slightly downplaying just how insanely populated the place is. When I said that Manila is the most densely populated place on Earth, it seems as though I probably had forgotten all about Mong Kok. There are believed to be a staggering 130,000 people per square kilometer living here. Just to put that in perspective, there are 8,000 people per square kilometer in Sydney, Australia, and that is that country's most densely populated place. In the United States, it's Washington, D.C. that claims the density prize, about 11,000 people per square mile, although we'll see some other U.S. cities with bigger numbers coming up, because these things do change a lot and have many different ways of being measured. I wonder how the crime is actually being handled in the areas like that. What's the stats on it too? Is crime up? Is it down? Is it continuously going up? Like, what's the stats on that? I, I wish they would talk or, or go deep into that because I'm thinking to myself like, I, what? It, and then I guess some people would probably rebuttal and be like, well, what are they stealing? In some of these places, if some of these places are poor, what are they taking from them? So. I guess, I don't know, but but being in certain situations could make you angry and want to commit a crime. So I don't know. I want to hear them address it though. Even so, that probably gives you an indication that this part of Hong Kong is bananas. Literally everywhere is packed all of the time. The streets are rammed with constant traffic and the sidewalks are totally packed with people. There is constant light and noise pollution, perpetual construction work, and it's not even a cheap option. Rent here is sky high, despite all of the irritation and inconvenience of sharing the space with a zillion other people. Yet, for many, the energetic atmosphere and the convenience of living in the heart of Hong Kong's commercial district make it a desirable place to live. Number five. Wait, so what you mean to tell me I gotta live on top of somebody in a smaller place and pay high rent? <sighs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely angry. <laughs> See, that's why they need to talk about the crime rate. Because I'm angry and I'm not even there. I'm angry for them. Five. The Rocinha Favela, a city within a city. In big Brazilian cities, the favelas are the densely populated areas where the poorest of the population live in busy and oftentimes less regulated communities. In Rio de Janeiro, the favelas are famous for their vibrant but often dangerous way of life. The Rocinha favela is one of Rio's favelas, and it also happens to be the largest. This place can be seen sprawled across the steep hillside, all up away from the center of the city. Though they are poorer areas and packed with people, it doesn't mean that the favela favelas are all slums. In fact, the Rochinha favela has all of those things that you would expect to find in any neighborhood. There are the usual necessities like running water and electricity. There are even schools, shops, and pharmacies. 
So life in the favela is ordinary in some ways, but extraordinary in others. These are the places where the creativity and expression of the local people is visible and celebrated. There's a dizzying array of art and food culture taking place in the favela. And although they have the reputation for being dangerous, and they're more dangerous in some respects than other parts of the city, some of the favelas are also some of the most interesting and real places in Rio. Number four, Malay Island, the busy heart of the Maldives. The Republic of the Maldives is a string of small coral islands, about 1,200 in total. There are clusters of these islands, which are known as atolls, across 90,000 square kilometers of the Indian Ocean, and it is a very busy place indeed. Now, when we think of the Maldives, we may imagine exclusive vacation destinations with beautiful sandy beaches and crystal clear waters and miles of lush green landscapes and luxury resorts. There are parts of this country which are far from that idyllic scene. I mean, people have to live and work here as well. It's not a vacation for the locals, after all. This island has a population of over 200,000 people, and they're all crammed onto an island which has an area of around 8 square kilometers, so there's not a whole lot of breathing room in this densely populated place. Mele, the capital of the Maldives, is not only the political and economic center of the country, but also a hub of cultural and social activities. The city is home to significant landmarks such as the 17th century Hukuru Miski Mosque, known for its intricate coral stone carvings, and the bustling Malay fish market, which is a vital part of the local economy. Additionally, Malay is the main gateway for tourists visiting the Maldives, with its international airport serving as the primary entry point to the Paradise Islands. The city's infrastructure has been developed to support both its residents and the influx of tourists making it a dynamic and multifaceted urban area. The city itself pretty much covers the entire island, and it's also home to about one-third of the entire population of the Maldives. Living conditions in Malay are characterized by high population density and limited space, which pose significant challenges for urban planning and development. Number three, Kowloon Walled City, a lawless urban jungle. Between the 1950s and 1994, Kowloon Walled City, located just to the north of Hong Kong Island, was the most densely populated place on Earth. It began as a Chinese military fort and later turned into an ungoverned and ungovernable city of squatters and buildings on top of buildings. It was an enormous complex of 300 buildings that were all interconnected across one city block. This area was essentially a lawless kind of space, which was between Hong Kong, which was then run by the British, and China. Kowloon Walled City was run by criminals, famous for organized crime and opium dens. Despite the small area that it took up, Kowloon Walled City was home to more than 33,000 people. There were triad-run gambling dens, and it was feared by police and all other official health inspectors would not step into the place. In Canton See, that's another thing they don't talk about right there. Police ain't coming in certain areas, so you can forget it. You have no help, no lifeline, no nothing. Nobody's coming to save you because of the conditions, because of areas like this that are run by groups of criminals. Like, yeah, 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 man. We need to address this. We need to address it. We see so many problems within this video, and that could very well be us soon. Denise, it was known as the City of Darkness. Interestingly, despite its notoriety for crime and squalor, Kowloon Walled City was also a thriving community in many ways. The residents developed a self-sufficient society with shops, schools, and small factories. Dentists and doctors practiced there without official licenses, and people built their lives amidst the chaos. The labyrinthine structure and the high density of people created a unique social ecosystem where everyone knew their neighbors, and mutual aid was a necessity for survival. The residents' ingenuity in making the most of their cramped quarters was remarkable, with makeshift balconies and rooftop gardens adding a touch of green to the otherwise gray and claustrophobic environment. Kowloon Walled City no longer exists. It was demolished in the early 1990s, and a park was built in its place, so you cannot actually step inside the most densely populated place on Earth. But frankly, you probably wouldn't have wanted to anyway. The legacy of Kowloon Walled City lives on through documentaries, books, and the memories of those who experienced its unique environment. It remains a fascinating example of human adaptability and resilience in the face of extreme living conditions. Number two, 
Manila, a bustling urban metropolis. These days, it's allegedly Manila in the Philippines that is the most densely populated city in the whole wide world. However, as we shall see, there are many, many different contenders for this unenviable title. Manila has an astonishing population of 21.3 million people. That means that there are 42,000 inhabitants per square kilometer. It's firmly amongst the most populated and also the fastest growing cities in Southeast Asia. Manila's history makes it a hugely important place in the world because it's long been considered one of the original global cities and was part of the earliest commercial networks that connected Asia with the Spanish Americas via the galleon trade. These trade routes were essentially what built the global world that we know today, and Manila was at the forefront of that. The rapid urbanization and economic growth of Manila have led to significant challenges, including overcrowding, traffic congestion, and inadequate infrastructure. Despite these issues, Manila is a vibrant cultural hub with a rich history and diverse population. The city's historic landmarks, such as Intramuros, the Manila Cathedral, and Rizal Park, attract tourists from around the world. Additionally, Manila is a center for education and healthcare in the Philippines, hosting several prestigious universities and medical institutions. Number 1. Mumbai, India's Commercial Powerhouse Mumbai is a city of huge importance in India. It is the commercial capital of this vast and ever-expanding nation, and it also is the most densely populated city in the whole of the country. The population of Mumbai has totally exploded in the decades since the 1970s, leaping from 2.9 million in 1971 to 9.36 million in 2011. This massive increase has placed a huge strain on the aging infrastructure of the place, so other nearby cities have begun to develop. Places like Navi Mumbai and Vasai Virar are increasingly popular choices for those who are trying to escape the crammed confines of Mumbai itself. There are around 73,000 people for each square mile of this madly packed in place. Oh no, they need, uh, uh, what is that, floating homes. That's what we need to start doing, fam. The ocean's right there. Let's, let's put several of those floating homes out there, see who wants to live there. I'd take it if I was living in some of these places. Let's see, can we do that, man? I was sitting here thinking, like, what could be a solution? Floating homes. Making it one of the most densely populated places on the planet, the economic significance of Mumbai cannot be overstated. It is home to the Bombay Stock Exchange, numerous multinational corporations, and the thriving Bollywood film industry. The city also serves as a major hub for finance, commerce, and trade in India. The influx of people seeking job opportunities has led to rapid urbanization and the expansion of both formal and informal housing sectors. However, the disparity between wealth and poverty is stark, with luxury high-rises standing in stark contrast to sprawling slums like Dharavi, one of Asia's largest. That's all for today from some of the world's most populous places. Where do you live, and is it as crowded as any of the places we've seen today?